we'll go ahead and just worship the king of all glory the lover of our soul the lifter of our head an amazing completely amazing god the god whose thoughts towards us as numerous as the sands of the sea six billion all of us six billion of us and he's thinking about everybody six billion six billion of us his thoughts towards each and every one of us are like the sand of the sea just praise his holy name thank you father we give you the glory totally amazing father so you are so you are so you are thank you father thank you lord thank you jesus we praise you we praise you thank you father thank you father we give you praise alone to the hour you to please come and take preeminence in this meeting the gift of god unto man gentle holy spirit please lead us in this meeting i hide myself and all them that are listening in the blood of jesus heavenly father king of glory that you will put your mouth beside mine and father lord that the words that will be spoken will produce forth fruit in all our lives to those who will listen right now to those who will listen to the tapes later Lord, that it will bear fruit in all our lives in the name of Jesus. Luke 5, 17 says that as Jesus ministered in the house, there was virtue to heal. Let virtue to heal move in this room. Attending to every need, spiritual, emotional, financial, in the name of Jesus. And to as many that are listening elsewhere. And who will listen in the future? Lord, your same grace will enrapture them when they come in contact with this tape in the name of jesus thank you everlasting father in jesus most exalted name we have prayed amen praise the lord praise jesus good afternoon welcome to the welcome to the empowerment service of the well oasis international I'm privileged to take passion energizes your talent from the scriptural perspective. I give praise and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ who's preserved us through 2020, past January 2021, and now we're in February. You got off your bed this morning, not because of something special, but you got off because he let you get up. 
I've heard stories of people who went to bed the night before, all hale and hearty. The following morning, they couldn't get out, out of the bed. They just do, they don't even know why. They have to carry them physically to Igbobi to find out. Oh, they say one nerve went sideways and the person couldn't get out of their bed. But you got out of your bed this morning. So praise be to Jesus. All your bodily parts are functioning accurately, perfectly, as God had ordained them to. So he deserves all the praise. You can stretch your arms. You can, your sense of taste is not impaired. You're not locked up in some isolation world because, you know, you came in contact with something or the other. And by God's grace and power, every time, every time and anywhere you go, the blood of Jesus will avail for you. They will see you, it will see you, they will see you, noisome pestilence will see you, and it will see the blood and say, I can't stay here, I have to go elsewhere. So will it continually be in the name of Jesus. All right, so let's get into it. Philippians 3 is going to be our takeoff verse, Philippians 3 from 8 to 11. Um, scriptural perspective, passion energizes your talent. Holy Spirit, please speak to your people. And speak. Philippians 3, 8 reads as follows, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith by Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and watch this, the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Paul says in verse 8, he says, Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Paul was sold out to the Lord completely. I'd like to read it again, but this time from the message version so you can see it broken down in everyday language. The very credentials of these people are with these people are waving around as something special. I'm tearing up and throwing out with the trash. Along with everything else I used to take credit for. And why? Because of Christ. Be why? Because of Christ. Yes, all things I once thought were so important are gone from my life. Compared to the high privilege of knowing Christ Jesus as my master firsthand, everything I once thought I had going for me is insignificant. Dog, dung. I've dumped it all in the trash so that I could embrace Christ and be embraced by him. I didn't want some petty, inferior brand of righteousness that comes from keeping a list of rules when I could get the robust kind that comes from trusting Christ, God's righteousness. 10 and 10 through to 11, I gave up all the, that inferior stuff so I could know Christ personally, experience his resurrection power and be a partner in his suffering and go all the way, all the way to death itself. If there was any way to get in on the resurrection from the dead, I wanted to do it. Revelation 3.19 is another verse that I think is relevant uh, concerning what we're looking at today and it reads as follows, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Um, the Amplified Classic goes as follows. So be enthusiastic and in earnest and burning with zeal. Burning with zeal. And repent, changing your mind and attitude. So the Bible passage that I will take from, I want to take from, is um, my dear friend, Brother David, and that is Gargantuan Gar 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 battle with uh, Goliath in 1 Samuel 17. Oh, my all time great. 1 Samuel 17, verse 26. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Verse 36. 1 Samuel 17, 26. 36, 37, 46, and 47. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing that he had defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, 
The Lord had delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. He would deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Verse 46. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand and I will smite thee and take thine head off from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know there is a God in Israel. And this and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with spear, sword or spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Please forgive me, I have a lot of, of well, we're almost through, yeah. Psalm 18, 1 and 2. Psalm 18, verse 1 and 2. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord, the words of this song in the day the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. Then another psalm I want to read that in my view is indicative of the qualities that we're looking at today that we will mix with our talent is from Psalm 34, verse 1. And it uh, reads as follows, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. You see, this psalm, uh, the context, you know, we, we love the words, but the context in which David said it was that he was before Abimelech, the king of the Philistines. And people around him began to whisper. I was running from Saul then, and people around the king started to whisper, is it this David that has massacred us before? Is it this fellow that you want to put here? Hmm. So David started to pretend like he was mad. Then when he finished pretending that he was mad, he came and wrote this psalm. I mean, just, just picture it. So in other words, he didn't write that psalm, and it, it came to me a long time ago. David didn't write the psalms because he was feeling funky, you know, and everything was hunky-dory. He actually wrote a lot of those psalms in the depths of despair. But those things that he could write a, a a, a psalm in the depths of his despair indicates the depth of his passion for God. I like to tell the young people when they are, you know, when, when, when they are doing boyfriend, girlfriend, and all of that, I, I like to tell, I like to tell them, it's not when he takes you to Roma or when he takes you to Mr. Biggs or Farm City that. You know, we, I mean, it's all to be enjoyed. I'm not saying it isn't. But the reality is that when you, when you know you really love her, is when she's upset you and you still can't do without her. Do you get it? Praise Jesus. So, let me just give us an outline some of the lesson objectives, just broadly. Number one, talent must be combined with other elements to produce success. I know you said it here, you... You know, this is like the third time it's being said. Uh, I said it, I know Sister Ngozi said it last week. Uh, number two, to show that passion plus talent was and is a God idea or concept. Lesson objective number two is to show that passion plus talent was and is a God idea and concept. And then identify the definition of passion and its biblical equivalence. Identify the definition of passion and its biblical equivalence. Number three, to, recapitu to recapitulate the scriptural reasons why passion is necessary for our talent to shine. If you, when you read the book, you see that John C. Maxwell you know, give certain bullet points as to why passion is necessary. And I'm going to try, by the special grace of God, to just show scriptural equivalence of all of that. So, what is the meaning of passion? So, we need to kick off from that point. What is the meaning of passion? Passion 
is something you are strongly interested in and enjoy. Passion is something you are strongly interested in and enjoy. When I was a young, when I was a teenager, I could play footy from morning till night. Finish playing it from morning till night, still going to the go go home, put on a video cassette and watch another three hours of it. I was never bored with it. Passion is a powerful emotion. Another meaning of the word passion is a powerful emotion or feeling or its expression. A powerful emotion or feeling or its expression. Expression of the emotion. So, for, for example, emotion of love, anger, or hate. The emotion of love, anger, or hate. You see, this, the emotion of love ties in with you know, that's Psalm 34, one that we read before where he said, uh, I'll, no, no, Psalm 18, verse 1, where he said, I will love you, O Lord, with all my heart. Passion is a willingness to suffer for what you love. Passion is a willingness to suffer for what you love. See that thing I said a few minutes ago. Passion is a willingness to suffer for what you love. That's why they describe what Jesus Christ went through when he was arrested in the garden, beaten up before Caiaphas, scorched by Pilate, made to carry the cross, plated and shorn with a crown of thorns, had his clothes taken away from him, got 40 lashes, had a six-inch nail nailed in his hands, in his, another one in his feet, and then got a spear in his side for good measure. He went through all of that because he loved us. Remember now, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. Passion is an overmastering feeling or conviction or assurance. Passion is an overmastering feeling or conviction. Assurance. Or confidence or certainty. It's an overmastering feeling or conviction of assurance, of confidence, of certainty. One of the synonyms of passion is a word called zeal. One of the synonyms that is a similar word. That's what I mean by synonym. One of the similar words to passion is zeal. And zeal you'll find more readily in the Bible at least 46 times. And, you know, so for example, there's something I was just reading a few minutes ago before I came in. It, no, let me know. I'm, I'm about to run ahead of myself. Let me hold back. Let me hold back. Anyway, passion and there's something John C. Maxwell said in the book that I thought was relevant in defining what passion is. Passion is what you cry about. Passion is what you sing about. Passion is what you dream about. All these things comprise passion. Now, I want to look at the, the next subtitle I want to look at is, you know, the scriptural basis for passion energizing talent. The script, there's a scriptural basis. Remember I said that... Uh, Passion, mixing with our talent to bring us to a place where, you know, we're successful, where we are constantly learning, where we're ahead of the curve, where we're the best at what we do. Is, is, it, there's a scriptural basis for it, why it is so. And the scriptures that I illustrate the proposition to me uh, are Genesis 1.26 and 1 Thessalonians 5.23. First, uh, Genesis 1.26 and then 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Genesis 1.26 says, And let us make man in our image uh, uh, after our likeness and let them have what? That's the, that's the operative word for the interpretation that the Lord showed me. So just mark that word. Let's hold off on that word. Let's pop down to 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, I said, you know, I said at the point, I said that 
that passion is a God concept. So if you go to a verse of scripture like Isaiah 59 verse 17, you will see that God has zeal. Or when you go to Isaiah, I think it's, uh, I think it's 9, uh, where it says, uh, For unto us a son is given, unto us, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be Wonderful, Counselor, um, Everlasting Father, and so on and so forth. And I think it ends with, And the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform it. So God has zeal. So that's why I say that zeal or passion is, remember I said zeal is synonymous with passion. So in other words, passion is something that God has and God started because everything begins and ends with him. He didn't acquire passion or zeal because we came along much later and did No, he always had it and he chose to delegate it. Now, now, please forgive me, let me preface my comments first with this statement. When the enemy wants to attack the manifestation of a person's destiny, what he attacks is a person's passions. That's how he does it. The children of Israel in Numbers 13 and 14, when they had sent the 12 spies or the 12 scouts to go and look the promised land out, the reason why the 10 gave a negative report and the reason why everyone else in Israel followed after them other than Caleb, Moses, Moses and Joshua, the reason why was that they had no passion for the promised their land. Moses, ah, even when God had told Moses, Moses, you ain't going there no more. Moses said, please now, please now. God finally said, okay, don't ask me anymore about this matter. What I will do for you is I will show it to you. He was passionate about it. He wouldn't let go. But the rest of the children of Israel, they had no passion for it. Do you remember what they said in Numbers 14? The first thing they said, it still amuses me. Please appoint a captain. Let's go back to Egypt. That was the very first thing they said. And the only reason why they would say that is that, you know, the, 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 promi- the, the law of the promised land that God had promised there wasn't attractive to them. They weren't passionate about it. So, I mean, they couldn't be bothered. Let's go back to Egypt where we ate leeks and had garlic and ate the cucumbers, you know, and pumped water from the Nile with our feet. At least we knew where we stood then. I don't understand what Moses is saying. You, you get what I'm saying? Anyway, let me not dra- drag the, the point too, too much further. So, 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 you need to, we need to know, eh? so let me break, let, let me try and explain uh, uh, 126 and, and, and 1 Thessalonians 5.23. When, when, when you say, when God says, let, and let them have dominion, right? Embedded within the word dominion, right? Is the concept that of opposition. Praise Jesus. Embedded inside the word dominion is opposition. Because the only reason why you need dominion is to subjugate something. To bring it under your control. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the only reason why. So when God said, let them have dominion, God himself anticipated that or knew that there will be obstacles to the wonderful new earth that he was developing. But he pretty much figured that if man was with me and man is talking to me, what will happen is that I would distill or I will confer the necessary wisdom that will allow him to surmount whatever is opposing him. Do you get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? So, part of that process is, is that man is broken into three. Spirit, soul, and their body. The emotions reside in the soul. Our emotions reside where? In the soul. And the way the thing works is, is that God will give you a vision to arouse the emotions in your soul such that if there's a challenge to that vision that he has given to you, then the soulish part of you that is tuned to God, obviously, is, is now aroused and then constrains the man, spirit and body, and propels him to take whatever steps are required in order to bring about the manifestation of that thing that he wants. He saw. Do you, do you understand? 
Do you understand? So God gave us, God gave us, what's the word? God gave us passion in our souls so that we could manifest dominion. Praise Jesus. God gave us passion so that we could manifest the dominion that he had ordained for us in Genesis 1 verse 26. Sorry, does this make sense? Praise the Lord. So, so that's the scriptural basis. So passion is not a negative thing. You see, it's, it's one of those actually, let me say it this way. You know, because a man is three in one, eh? so, so what tends to happen is this. What God wants is that the spirit will be the predominant member of the triumvirate, the three. So the spirit which is hooked up with God will now constrain the body and constrain the soul to chase godly pursuits. Do you get it? That's the way it's meant to work. Lots of times, depending on what we are presently ingesting, that's taking in, maybe what you're watching, maybe what you're listening to, do you understand? Depending on what you're watching, then sometimes the body may end up being the more, um, the more dominant party in the triumvirate. So it is what the body says will be done. That's what the, the body, I mean, that's what the triumvirate does. The spirit may be grumbling, but, you know, the, 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 the body is in ascendancy. Do you get what I'm saying? In the same way, you know, wrong passion for, for, for the opposite sex, for example, can, can end up being a, what do you call it, the driving force, suppressing the spirit, and of course, dragging the body along with it. So the way God wants it, ultimately, is that the spirit will be in ascendancy, and it brings under, under subjection the body as well as the soul. So they say, you are fasting for 60 days. You say, what? Before you go out there, you're, in fact, somebody's frying fish past you. You say, oh my God. <laughs> you, and, and the body's screaming, give me fish. I want fish. Or, or your body's screaming, let me sleep. I want to sleep. You know, and, and, and that tug of war takes place. But when the spirit is in ascendancy, then all those voices will be stilled completely. In fact, they know. They themselves know. They don't even raise the issue. Say, you know what? We're not, it's not happening. Forget it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So they don't even raise it. Praise Jesus. I hope that makes sense. Anyway. So, so uh, passion follows dominion. Okay, I've, I've more or less spoke about, spoken about this. I've run ahead of myself, so, so let's, um, let, let's move along. Just take this small caption. I hope it makes sense to you, and I hope it's useful to you. Passion is part of our God-given toolkit to enforce dominion. Passion is part of our God-given toolkit to enforce dominion. Passion is part of our God-given toolkit to enforce dominion. Another nugget I want to give you is passion is a byproduct of faith. Passion is a byproduct of uh, faith. Passion is a byproduct of faith. When you truly believe God has called you to do something, then you can't rest until that thing that you saw comes into manifestation. Jeremiah said, your word is like a fire in my bones. I could not keep quiet. Passion is ignited in us by seeing, passion is ignited in us by us seeing the word of God or a dream or a vision where you see the thing pictorially when it is the thing you've been called to do. You, you, you see, you've seen yourself doing it. So, because you've seen yourself doing it, you can't rest until you, you, you are doing what you want, what you, you've seen yourself doing. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, ma'am. Passion, another nugget I just want to give. Passion gives, keeps you on course for destiny. Passion keeps you on course for your divine destiny. Passion keeps you on course for your divine destiny. Passion keeps you on course for your divine destiny.
Another nugget I want to give is passion is generated by vision. Passion is generated by, by vision. Passion is generated by vision. Passion is generated by vision. It's almost like a, it's almost like a nuclear engine or nuclear fission. Once it ignites, once you've seen the vision, you, you know, you don't you don't need external fuel from outside. It's just it's there. It just keeps on splitting the atom and producing energy. So, passion is an indicator of purpose. Passion is in an indicator of purpose. Passion is an indicator of purpose. Passion is an indicator of purpose. So, I'm going to look at you know the power of passion as. Looking at some of those subheadings that John C. Maxwell uh, took us through. Number one, passion is the first step to achievement. Number one, passion is the first step to achievement. And I want to commend for your attention, Mark 12, 29 to 30. Passion is the first step to achievement. I commend for your attention, Mark 12, 29 to 30. And the scripture reads, it says, and, John, and Jesus answered him, the first of all commandments is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. David's passion, just to illustrate the proposition, it was David's passion for the Lord that pushed him forward at the valley of Elah. It wasn't that he thought he was Roger Moore or Daniel Craig or what's his name, Matt Damon. It wasn't like one of those, or Tom Cruise. Mm -mm. It wasn't one of those. Or what's that other one that did the uh, Aquaman, Jason... Uh, you know, you know the name. I watched the film. <laughs> so, so it was his passion for the Lord. Not, notice the first thing he said to them. He said, "Who is this one that comes Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God?" He was, he was, he was more concerned about, you know, God getting glory. Who is this man denigrating my God? Excuse me, it's not happening. Not while I'm here. It ain't happening. Not while I'm here. I refuse to allow it. Do you, do you follow what I'm saying? Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Okay, number two, passion increases willpower. Passion increases willpower. In Nehemiah chapter six, uh, Sambalat and Tobias and another fellow called Geshem. Geshem. So Nehemiah six from two through to four. Nehemiah six, two through, through to four. So they sent a message to Nehemiah. Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work. So I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Do you get it? When people have identified their passion, that's how they eliminate stuff. You know, uh, how does Hebrews put it? He says, uh, uh, looking unto Jesus, the author of finish. No, he says, is it laying aside every weight? Just drop it. Because while it is expedient, while it's expedient or important, it is not, uh, it's not, it's not this one that will get us to where we need to get to. It does not help me fulfill my passion. So you know what? It needs to wait. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Uh, another example I wanted to give about that item too, that is to say passion increases willpower, is, is, is uh, David in 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 47. He said, his passion was that the Lord would be glorified. So, so first of all, the man, no, first of all, his brother, not only dissed him, his brother first of all dissed him and said, excuse me, you little runs, what are you doing here? You know, go on, where are those few sheep that you are taking care of? Come on, run to the wilderness and go and take care of them. So that was, big boys are talking and you, I don't know what, pip squeak, you've come here to come and do what? Please be going. 
So that was one discouragement. Then he went to meet Saul. Saul said, bros, that man has been a warrior since his youth. What are you? I don't think you are up for this. And then he powers past that one. Then, then he meets the giant himself. The giant himself says, are you? You are pepper soup this evening. Oh, pepper soup for the birds. I finish you. I chop your head off, etc., etc. But notice his responses. His responses were driven by his passion. He knew the person whom he was dealing with. The person who he's really dealing with. Goliath is just on the fringes. And he said, the battle is the Lord's. The battle is lost. I speak to somebody here. I pray this word encourages you. The challenge you are facing in the battle is the Lord's. Amen. He will see you through in the name of Jesus. Amen. Blind Bartimaeus is another example I want to give. Mark, Mark 10, 46 through to 52. I mean, did you notice the way they, they were trying to shut him down and he kept on squealing and making more noise? Guys, <coughs> my passion is to see. And guess what? The person who's going to sort me out is about to go past and you're telling me that I should keep quiet out all your life. It ain't happening. So it kept on squealing some more. Number three, passion produces energy. Blind Bartimaeus' story, you can see in Mark 10, 46 through to 52. Mark 10, 46 through to 52. Passion produces energy. Passion produces energy. Passion produ produces energy. Uh, I, I will commend for your attention Psalm 18, verse 29. For by thee... I have run through a troop, and by my God, I have leaped over a war. A troop is at least, if you use U.S. Army specifications, if or correct me if I'm wrong. No, a cavalry troop is more than now. A cavalry troop is, is it three tanks, so, so you're looking at five people inside each tank. So you're looking at at least 15 people, if you're looking at a cavalry troop. Or if you're looking at a, a squad in a platoon, you're looking at a, a, at least 12 people. The guy says, I ran through a troop. How did he do it? It was because of the Lord. He says, for by thee, that my passion, the Lord, carried me through all these people. And listen, eh, let's all just stay, no matter what is going on, eh, just, just in your mind's eye, just hold on to the hem of his garment. Just hold on to it. Eh? And I promise you, I promise you, in the name of Jesus, that there's nothing that will knock you down. <laughs> I didn't hear any amen. No. Anyway, I receive it. There's nothing that's going to knock you down. The Bible says uh, seven times will the righteous fall down, eh? but uh, the more always gets up. The unrighteous will go down once and they never get up. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord is God. Delivered him from them all. Not one of his bones are broken. Anyway, I've also realized, like Sister Vidimi is a, is a teacher. She's a teacher. She's Raboni. Me, I'm just an old-fashioned encourager. I found out that exhort and encourage mean the same thing. So, so, so that's what you really are. Okay, let me own this one for once. <laughs> I, 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 own it. I, I, I can't help myself, you know. When I, when I sound like, you know, you know, when I'm coming in and say, you know, I'm going to keep it all nice and tight, you know, very gentlemanly and decent, and you know, all of that, very prim and proper. And by the time I get here, I get excited about the word. I get excited about the ministration I'm receiving in my spirit, and then I can't help myself but bubble forth. So that's what's going to happen to somebody here. And I mean, Amen. I receive it in the name of Jesus. I don't know about you. Number four. Amen. Passion is the foundation for excellence. Passion is the foundation for excellence. Uh, by accident, uh, two days ago or three days ago, I was uh, getting ready to go at, to work. My wife had been listening to some chap. I never heard of him before. So, no, it was sounding very interesting. So, when she left, the, she left, I think she went to cycle or whatever it was, or she went to work. So, I just pressed the play button and started listening to this fellow. And he said one very interesting thing that I want to share with you. He says, the intellect is at its finest when it considers God. Bill Johnson. The intellect is at its finest when he considers God, watch, listen for this next one that he said. <laughs> the guy is on fire. I never knew who, who he was before. Bill Johnson, he says, there is a level of genius given to those who start with God and move on to life. 
there is a level of genius. So when we are in Christ and he has given us a vision of where he wants us to be, like he gave Joseph dreams that people will be buying before him. Are you with me? When he gives you that vision, when he gives you that vision, he then backs it up with passion, which indicates your purpose and which keeps you going even when everything else in the world says you can't, it's not happening, it's not happening, forget it. Praise Jesus. So when we see, what, when we see God first, Matthew 6, 33, he vectors us, he vectors us into purpose and passion self-ignites. I'll repeat that. When we seek God first, Matthew 6, 33, he vectors us, he vectors us into purpose and passion self-ignites. See, this is what I was meant to do. This is what I was meant to do. This is what I'm meant to do. I want to commend for your attention again, Acts 4.13. Um, it's a story about when Peter, Peter and John were arrested after healing. People are wicked though. They healed somebody who undoubtedly had been, had been challenged, physically challenged, for several years. And then some people locked them up one night. Ha! People, mankind, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's leave that. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus, verse 18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, watch this, though. whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and we have heard. When you have caught your passion, when you have seen your passion, when you've got your vision, uh -uh. they say, is it the only that thing you are talking about? Yes, it is. If you can't stand it, you stand it, run away. Anyway, let's go on. Number five, passion makes a person contagious. Well, uh, <laughs> Maybe I should rephrase that. Passion is contagious. That's what I'd rather say. Passion is contagious. Passion is contagious. Don't you see when, when David finished dealing with Goliath, the first thing, first thing was that Saul's son, Jonathan, said, come, you are going to be my chummy. In fact, I enter into covenant with you because there's something you are carrying that, in fact, is the thing. So I want it. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. David's mighty men. You see stories of them in 2 Samuel 23. The whole chapter is ded dedicated to the exploits that those guys did. When they saw what David had done in the valley of Elah, ah, uh People came from Issachar. People came from all over Israel. They came down and said, you know what, David, come and be our leader. We are going to follow you. Anywhere you want to go, we'll go with you. Then some even came out of the tribe of uh, Benjamin, which was Saul's tribe. But maybe I digress. Let's read 2 Samuel 23. And these be the names, these be the names of the mighty men whom David had, the Tacmonites that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adino, the Esnite. He lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. Verse 14. And David was then in a hold. And then, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, oh, that one would give me a drink, give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And three mighty men, and the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines, and drew out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. I'm saying that David's exploits at the valley of Elah encouraged other people of like, arguably in some cases, one guy fought 800 people. Ah, he, he, he. <laughs> I mean, absolutely incredible number. I used to say at uh, praise sanctuary before, try and kill one goat. And see what it is like. 
The goat is not going to lie down and let you kill it. There's always a struggle. You tie one leg, you tie the hind legs, you tie the front legs. The animal is still squirt, you know, talk less of one human being that he can see you coming. 800. But the point is that it's, it's David's exploits that, and his passion that attracted these people to come and surround him. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. I prophesy over you, I prophesy over myself that you will not lack destiny helpers to push you forward in the name of Jesus. They will see your dream. They will see the vision that God has given you. They will identify your passion even when you don't know it. And they will align to bring it into fruition in the name of Jesus. How to be a talent plus person. Number one, prioritize. Uh, The author says prioritize your life according to your passion. So, this is the way I understand it. After having inventoried your gifts and talents, and having identified your purpose, give your passion priority. As it is said, let the main thing remain the main thing. Or major on the major, not on the minors. I'll take that again. After you have inventoried your gifts and talents, and after having identified your purpose, give your passion priority. Let the main thing remain the main thing. Or major on the major, not the minors. Beloved, does that make sense? Because it's that bit majors on the mi- majors on the major. E.g. C.Y.M. 5 a.m. By 8 p.m. She's in bed. If I see a memo, if I don't see a memo, CYM is the major. Do you get what I'm saying? CYM is my passion. So I'm going to give it rapt attention. Any other thing else getting in the way? Husband, children, and any other thing else? Pack. Do, do, do you get what I'm saying? She's majoring on the major. Do you get what I'm saying? So, so that's the way it is. When you've identified your own. In fact, what I've found out about successful people, eh, once they've identified their passion, passion they, they suffer tunnel vision. That, that thing that they've seen. Oh, yeah. If Olubo Rock won't fall for their front, make him fall for their front. Provided he no fall on top of them. They are going to circumnavigate it, bore a hole through it, fly over it, uh, house, take a private jet over it, Get a flying carpet over anyhow, somehow. They, they are going to pass it. Uh, how was that song by Olita Adams? I don't care how you get there. Just get here if you... Just get here. Anyhow. That's the attitude. Very... You know, I, I, and, I, and I see it clearly because I'm the direct opposite. You know, I'm not... I, I, I don't know where, where the... How selfish... Is, is the two things I'm selfish about and I'm... I agree openly to say it. Food. If it's ta- don't mess with my food. Give it to me as I went do. Otherwise, I can fight you. Then the other one, that I, you know, that one they don't say it too often. Uh, three letters. But once those ones are taken care of, me, I'm always the last in the queue. I always put myself last in the queue. Everybody else in front. Do you get what I'm saying? So, so <laughs> when, I was, when I was collecting, there was a form for something I'm chasing. And when the, a registrar, when I was maybe eight years or six year, five years, six years at the bar, she was saying, ah, Mr. Modi, you finally woken up. I was looking at her. Eh? Well, I'm, not, I'm not wired that way. But, but, but the thing is, don't be like me. Be like them that are, have that focus on tunnel vision. Have that tunnel vision. In fact, I see it in the young people nowadays. One guy says he's resigning. I say, ah, Kilode, did we do you anything? He said, no, no, no. He has made up his mind in another nine years. He's going to be senior advocate of Nigeria. I say, Lele, oh. As evil people say, I come and see you. So this is, ah, MM, you are not strategic. He's already saying it. Me, anyway, let me not say anything beyond that. But you see how, that's how people that's how you get to where you want to get to praise jesus okay 
Jesus said, John 4, 34, he says, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That's what Jesus said. So he too was, he had it. Joseph, the son of Jacob, was primarily an administrator. You can see it in Genesis chapter 41 from 46. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land of Egypt. I mean, they just made him PM. After several years in prison, probably 13 years, you know what? Pharaoh, before I go around doing what you need me to do, I need to just take things easy. We need to take a vacation. I'll be stopping by to tell you my plans on a daily basis. He didn't do that. He immediately went out. Joseph was an administrator. Do you notice, if you go back to the story in Genesis 39, he was administering his brothers, his older brothers, and brought back an evil report that made the brothers begin to hate him. Because he knew how things ought to be. So his two gifts were ability to interpret dreams and to administer. Praise Jesus. Let me run from that one. Number two, protect your passion. Number two, protect your passion. Number two, protect your passion. Again, what I'm about to say is not really in the book. So just bear with me. I pray you catch it. In the kingdom of God, we protect our passion our purpose, our vision, by revisiting our vision in our imagination, revisiting it, praise the Lord, revisiting it, our vision, our passion, we, we, if it catches you, you know, you, you, you are seeing the thing, you are lying down, you are, you are lying down and you are reading a book, but you are seeing pictures of the thing fizzing past, Yongi Cho calls it the fourth dimension, I didn't, I, I was practicing it without even reading the book. Because when I read the book, I said, okay, so that's what I was doing. And it was even, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't conscious. It was that, like I said, I'll just open, I'm reading a book. And then the picture of the thing that God has shown me will be fizzing past. Or I'm in the shower and I'm saying, well, what am I going to say in court tomorrow? And the thing is just fizzing around in my, in my mind's eye. So anyway, if you want to protect your passion, you can deliberately... I, uh, uh, Pastor, um, no, uh, Pastor Desta, Pastor Sam, he says when he, won, when I did the executive course, he said the, the car that he wanted at a point in time, that he wanted to buy, put pictures of it all around in his office. Somebody walks in, say, oh, Pastor, you bought this one. He said, no, it's on the way. Do, do you get what I'm saying? So, whatever it is that gave you, you revisit it. Whatever it is. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, it says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so... Sorry? Okay. Typically, vision is etched into our soul, pictorially, by reason of the word that we have received. Number two, B, if you like, in protecting your passion. We protect our passion by studying the word of God. We protect, in fact, we both see our, our passion and protect it by studying the word of God. By studying the word of God. Joshua 1 8. Joshua 1 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. Day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Matthew 4 4. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, nor by Eba, nor by Begri and Amala, nor Niji and or Hasup, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of a God. We are another speaking spirit like God. When the Bible says, how does it say? It says, uh, a man was made in his image after his uh, likeness. It's another speaking spirit like God. So in the same way, God, when God said, let there be light, God had envisioned it, he had seen it, so he was speaking it into being. He wasn't, he wasn't speaking randomly. And then things came together randomly. Things came together according to what he had what? Seen. Another, uh, sorry, the verse of scripture to support that proposition is Habakkuk 2, 2, 2 to 3. And the Lord answered me and said, Habakkuk 2, 2, 2 to 3. Write the vision, make it plain upon the tables that he may run, that readeth it. 
for the vision is for yet an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. So your responsibility is to, in fact, in fact, it just hit me now. So you write the vision. When you've seen it, another word is you write it down. One other way that my wife used to love to used to do is when we're going into a venture, she will say to the Lord, give me a word. Give me a word. When God gives the word, once there's any obstacle, she will trot out the word and say, see what you said. So see it. So are you a man? Do you lie? You don't. So make it right. Praise Jesus. Number three. It says, what does the number three say? There it says, pursue your passion with when you've taken care of one and two that have listed, three will fall into place. <laughs> Once you've done one and two, three, it's, it's almost like it has a life of its own. People will pop out the woodwork and say, we've been wondering when you were going to, can we help with what you are doing? People will just be popping out from the woodwork. It's as if everyone's been waiting for you to pop out and say, I want you are going to do this particular thing. All the helpers you need will show up. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Before I, I, I resume my seat, may I in, make, extend this most generous invitation to as many that have not given their lives to Jesus. If you are in this room, or if you are listening over the internet or through your phone or whatever device you are, you see... God, that's what I was saying at the beginning of the message. God is amazing. Honestly, he's, to me, he's amazing. Why? Excuse me, what do I offer him that he would say, come and be part of my family? Please, someone tell me what he, you have done. What is it that we have done? But because God wants to edify you <laughs> because he wants to bless you because he wants to uh, enlarge you because he wants to optimize you <laughs> you know what we're doing here is optimization because he wants to optimize you because he has wonderful plans for you he's saying come and be a member of my family come and enter into relationship with me he's making this gracious offer and it's an incredible offer that no employer is offering. Full health care facilities. Full financial provision are accorded to you. Elevation and promotion are all embedded. Significance and relevance. All these things he wants to give unto you. So my brother and my sister, if you're on this call and you're not in this room, and you want to give your life to Jesus, send Sister Abidemi a message. Say, I want to give my life to Jesus. In fact, like, that makes it sound funny. I want to enter into a relationship with this God that says, I want, I want you to be one of my children. That I will live with you. Is there anybody in this room that wants to make that, answer that call? Anybody? One, two. If there's no one in this room, if there's someone online, please get back to Sister Abidemi. Father, I thank you for your word. I cover it in the blood of Jesus. This word will be fruitful in the life of your people. And the saints of God, who are sons waiting to be unveiled, shall say powerful. Amen.